USA has provided Pakistan approximately $33 billion in aid since 2001 after the World Trade Center attack. The aid was provided mainly to support the country's counterterrorism efforts, specifically against the Taliban and its allies active in Afghanistan. The majority of U.S. assistance to Pakistan is from the Coalition Support Fund. It provided reimbursement to Pakistan for expenses incurred and compensation for facilities made available to the coalition forces, such as the Shamsi and Dalbandan air bases. Here are five facts that prove that Pakistan has been directly working against U.S. interests and playing a double game. Number 5 5. On May 2, the U.S. Navy SEALs successfully killed Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. The SEALs flew into Pakistan in helicopters equipped with top-secret stealth technology. One of the advanced choppers was rendered inoperable after it crashed into the wall of the terror chief's compound. The SEALs attempted to destroy the helicopter, but parts of the helicopter, including its tail, remained intact. The Pakistani government allowed Chinese technical team to come in and take photographs of the remains. They were also allowed to touch, inspect and examine components of the super-secret American chopper. Number 4 4. Pakistan has long been supporting terrorism in India and has ceased to stop it. It has terror training camps in its soil, and infiltration attempts through LOC have taken place with active support from Pakistan military and ISI. In 2015, total incidents of infiltration, successful and unsuccessful, stand at 151. Pakistan has also protected high-profile terrorist leaders. For example it protects, Hafiz Muhammad Saeed, the chief of Jamaat Yud Dawa, who is responsible for 26-11 Mumbai attacks. Saeed is an internationally designated terrorist, and USA has placed a bounty on him for allegedly inciting Kashmiris in separatist activities. The Jamaat Yud Dawa is also designated as terrorist organization by the United Nations. Number 3 3. Pakistan has been sponsoring terrorist activity in Afghanistan. It is maintaining and protecting the Taliban to use them as a proxy force to gain control over and eventually dominate Afghanistan. Pakistan was responsible for the evacuation of about 5,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda leaders and fighters who were encircled by NATO forces in the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan. This event known as the Kunduz airlift which is also popularly called the airlift of evil, involved several Pakistani Air Force transport planes flying multiple sorties over a number of days. These activities have not ceased till date, and has resulted in sour relations between the two countries. As recent as April 2016, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said the militant groups are being hosted and aided from the territory of Pakistan. Number 2 2. Pakistan is continuing to sell nuclear materials to North Korea. Sources said, Pakistan Energy Commission PAC, has supplied restricted items like monal and inconal to North Korea, in violation of UN sanctions. They added that the China Atomic Energy Authority CAA, recently received a written complaint that supplies of a Chinese company, Beijing Suntech Technology, were being diverted to North Korea, by the Pakistani authorities. In effect, Pakistan has procured these sensitive items from China and has passed them along to North Korea. Number 1 1. USA found Osama bin Laden hiding in a walled compound, less than a mile from Pakistan's elite military academy. It does not require one to be exceptionally intelligent to understand that he was protected by the Pakistani authorities. Evidences suggest that the ISI chief, Lieutenant General Ahmed Shuja, Pasha, knew of bin Laden's presence in Abbottabad. Hussein Haqqani, the former Pakistani ambassador to US conceded that someone in Pakistan clearly protected bin Laden from 2006 to 2011. In addition, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the principal architect of the 9-11 attacks, 
Ramzi bin Al Shib, key facilitator for the September 11th attacks, as well as many senior terrorist leaders like Abu Zubeda, Abu Al Libi, and Sheikh Said Mossari have all been captured or killed inside Pakistan. Number five. Since 1970s lot of progress have been made in SAM, surface-to-air missile, technology. SAMs play a very important role of anti-area slash access denial. Any area defended by a modern SAM, like S-400, is very hard to penetrate, even by the most technologically advanced aircrafts. These systems are also economically more viable, as a missile costing $0.2 to $0.8 million can take out a $30 to $50 million plane. To defeat these systems, a new category of air-to-land missile have been developed, they are designated as anti-radiation missile, ARM. They are commonly carried by special aircrafts in, sea droll. Currently only a handful of countries, like the US, Germany, Russia and Brazil have built this kind of missile. Number 4. All SAM need radars for targeting. ARM are designed to pick up signals or radiations from radars and communication facilities, and then target them leading to their eventual destruction. The primary purpose of this type of missile is to degrade adversaries' air defenses in the first period of a conflict, in order to increase the chances of survival for the following waves of strike aircraft. They can also be used to quickly shut down unexpected surface-to-air missile sites during an air raid. Number 3 the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, is working on anti-radiation missile and is named as New Generation Anti-Radiation Missile NGARM. It is expected that the maiden flight test will be held by the end of 2016. The Indian Air Force would be inducting this missile within two years, following the completion of all the developmental trails. The missile is of indigenous development, including its seeker. This seeker is placed in the front end of the missile, and picks up various radio frequencies. Number 2 The missile is a single-stage, solid-fueled system, and will be using dual-pulse propulsion system instead of thrust propulsion. This is the first time the RDO is using a dual-pulse propulsion system. The missile will initially coast by firing the first pulse, the second pulse will be initiated, just before interception of the target, that is the terminal phase. The missile has a range of 100 km to 125 km. Number 1 The missile will be mounted on India's frontline air superiority fighter the Sukhoi Su-30 MKI, and the indigenous multi-role fighter, HEL LCA. Currently the Air Force equips its Su-30 MKI fighters with the Russian KH-35 missile and uses the French Martel anti-radiation missile on its Jaguar and Mirage aircrafts. The Air Force is negotiating to buy AGM-88 missiles from the US and plans to induct more than 1,500 in the next five years. It is expected that once the indigenous missile is developed, it will be used in conjugation with the above mentioned missiles. Thanks for what? This is the story of unparalleled acts of bravery. A story of men who unflinchingly laid down their lives for the motherland. This is an undying legend of valor, an immortal tale of sacrifice. This is the story of a nation that rose as one. January 1965, the Ran of Kutch. Pakistan stakes claim to 50% of the Ran of Kutch. India retaliates. The two nations lock horns in a series of border skirmishes. Pakistan's belligerents in the Ran of Kutch culminated in the launching of the doomed Operation Gibraltar. 
August 1965, Kashmir Valley. Heavily armed Pakistani intruders were found to have infiltrated deep into the Kashmir Valley. They were engaged in violent skirmishes with Indian security forces. The aim, to create havoc in the state. Pakistan hoped to portray their violent actions as Kashmiris rising against the Indian state. This would be their excuse to launch their regular forces to annex Kashmir. This was the devious Operation Gibraltar. But what made Pakistan believe that a plan that had failed in 1947 would succeed in 1965? Prime Minister Shastri had just taken over the reins of a nation that had come out of a difficult war with China. Our armed forces were in the midst of a massive transition and we faced a crippling food crisis. Pakistan, on the other hand, had received state-of-the-art American weapons and hardware. But Pakistan made a cardinal mistake. They forgot that the real strength of a nation's armed forces lies in its men and not its machines. The Indian soldier has always defended the motherland, even at the cost of his own life, and kept the tricolor flying high. India would not take the neighbor's aggression lying down. Prime Minister Shastri gave the enemy a firm reply. Immediately, plans were put in place to destroy the main breeding ground of Operation Gibraltar. This was the Haji Peer bulge of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir that lay between the Indian towns of Uri and Poonch. 25th of August, Operation Bakshi was launched to capture the vital Haji Peer Pass. The soldiers of one para, led by Major Ranjit Dayal, braved extreme weather and rain, physically climbed the slippery slopes of the treacherous mountain in zero visibility to attack the pass, and triumphantly planted the tricolor atop the Haji Peer. Major Ranjit Dayal was awarded the Mahavid Chakra for his decisive and inspiring leadership despite heavy odds. The capture of the Haji Pir Pass knocked the wind out of Operation Gibraltar, frustrating the enemy's plans. What followed was a full-scale military invasion on India in Akhnur, with the aim of severing Jammu and Kashmir from the rest of India. The two nations were now at war. This short but intense war saw unparalleled bravery and sacrifice by the Indian armed forces, and the iconic battles fought earned their place in Indian history. In response to Pakistan's attack in Jammu, India launched devastating offensives all along the Punjab border with the aim of reaching Lahore. One of the roads leading to Lahore goes through Barki, a small town that was heavily reinforced with infantry and tanks. The heroic soldiers of four Sikh, along with the blazing tanks of Central India Horse, led the attack on Barki. Bitter fighting ensued until the Indians emerged victorious with the symbolic hoisting of the Indian flag at Barki police station. Pakistan retaliated by attacking Kame Karan in Indian Punjab. The valiant soldiers of the Indian armed forces gave the invaders a fitting reply in the Battle of Asalotar. The Pakistan army, with its superior American tanks, was lured by Indian infantry and engineers into a defensive trap. The tanks of three cavalry formed a horseshoe, surrounded the enemy and completely crushed them. From the ashes of the battle emerged a graveyard of a hundred enemy tanks. This was one of the greatest defeats suffered by the Pakistan army in their history. 
It was in this battle the company quartermaster Abdul Hamid performed the most awe-inspiring act of gallantry, destroying a large number of enemy patent tanks using only his recoilless gun, which was no match for the tanks. In the highest tradition of the Indian Army, he selflessly made the ultimate sacrifice for the nation. He was awarded the Paranvi Chakra. The enemy would face defeat again, and this time on their own soil. Sialkot, Pakistan, the small town of Filora, witnessed the largest tank battle since World War II. This epic battle took place between moving tanks at a range of only 100 yards. Two of India's oldest regiments, Poona Horse and Hodson's Horse, led India to glory in this battle. Lieutenant Colonel Ardashir Tarapur ably led his regiment, Poona Horse, from the front in this battle, and despite being severely injured, refused to be evacuated. He was awarded the Paramvi Chakra posthumously. Dograi, Pakistan. As the war drew to a close, the battles reached a fervent pitch. In a final thrust towards Lahore, one of the toughest battles was fought in Indian history. The brave soldiers of Three Chart assaulted the town in the dead of the night. They entered each house, facing heavy fire, and after brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting over 27 hours, evicted the well-entrenched enemy. This was a hard-fought victory under the inspiring leadership of a stalwart commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Desmond Haid. Mahavi Chakra, he triumphantly led the Jats in a historic victory march through the town. Our warriors halted the invading Pakistani army on the ground with able support of our valiant air warriors. The Indian Air Force fought with distinction, blunting the enemy's thrust in key locations and fighting fierce dogfights against superior Pakistani aircrafts. They succeeded in completely demoralizing the enemy. The Navy also answered the clarion call of the nation. Our wide guardians protected against expansionist and nefarious designs of the adversary in our seas. The Navy's anti-submarine Elysee aircrafts swept the Arabian Sea, keeping it clear of enemy submarines. The support and prayers of an entire nation gave strength to the armed forces. With the Nara, Jai Jawan Jai Kisan on their lips, civilians from all walks of life helped the armed forces. The nation was filled with the spirit of unity. On the 22nd of September, the UN Security Council passed a resolution and ceasefire came into effect from 12 a.m on 23rd of September. In a war fought in Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan and Gujarat, India had gained 1,920 square kilometers as against only 540 square kilometers gained by the enemy. 2,862 brave sons and unsung heroes willingly laid down their lives in the defense of the motherland. 211 men were awarded gallantry awards. The enemy was left bloody-nosed, shaken, and bereft of any self-confidence. of valor and supreme sacrifice resulted in a renewed patriotic fervor across the country. On this occasion of 50 years of the 1965 war, the time is ripe for Indians from all corners of the nation to rally together and remember those who fought and sacrificed for the unity of the nation. 
and the idea of India.